the main clue happened in, in 1995, actually, when we realized that the sirtuins are important for the aging process in yeast cells that we use for baking and brewing. Now, the sirtuins, they got their name because of a gene called sirtu in this yeast cell. And, it, and it's an acronym, Silent Information Regulator, number two, SIR. Mm. And you might notice that I is very important, information. Mm. So the regulation of information was controlling the aging process in yeast. Mm. What it was doing was stabilizing the epigenome, basically telling the yeast cell which genes should be on and off to be healthy. And that became dysregulated over time. And one of the drivers of that misregulation and, and mess up was DNA damage. And so now the theory, fast forward to 2021, is that we have a lot of evidence from animals, people, that this is true for ourselves, that DNA damage drives changes to the epigenome, and that leads to cells losing their identity. So what I'm saying is that at the tippy top cause of aging, it boils down to a loss of information. I could write an equation for you. Um, it's basically this, the entropy loss of, it, of information. So what information am I really talking about? It's not the genetic information that we, that we struggle with. There are mutations for sure. Go out in the sun, you'll get mutation. But what's really driving aging, we find in my lab, is that it's the other type of information, the epigenetic information, which are the systems that read the DNA. Mm. I think of it as the software of the body that gets corrupted over time. I've used the analogy that if you, people can remember a compact disc, mm. the DNA would be the music encoded and the software, the, the epigenome is the reader of that music. And over time you get, you get scratches on the CD so you can't read the uh, information that well. And so we've, what we've discovered was that not only can we accelerate that process by scratching up the CD or causing DNA damage that accelerates this process in animals and watch them get old, but we found that there's a backup copy of that information. Essentially, you can either polish the CD or another analogy would be you just reboot the software and now the system runs like it should. And that's how we got those blind mice to see again. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> well, often people wonder, how is it possible? How could it be so simple? Um, and it was a lot of trial and error. We failed for many years at this, but we hit upon a combination of using three genes that we turn on when we're embryos and keep us young when we're embryos, but we don't use them when we're adults. And so we turned on those three genes in the mouse's eye or in human cells or those mini brains. And we find that those three genes are sufficient to reset the age of the cell in a safe way. The cells don't become cancers. They don't lose their age back to zero. They go back about 70% in age and stop. And then we take away the system, we turn it off, and the cells and the eyes age out again. And it was that simple. And the, the cool thing about it is, A, that there is a backup copy. We didn't know where, where, if there was. We still don't know where it is, by the way. We just know it exists somewhere in the cell. Um, and that it was really simple once you know how to do it. And what this really means is it's like the Wright brothers. It's, you know, you dream of flight for 10,000 years, maybe a million years. And all you need to do is to do a bit of math, strap on an engine, do a, some wind tunnel experiments, and you do it. And once you've done it, then the, you know, the future is inevitable. It just depends on how long it takes to build a 747 and go to the moon, but you know that it's going to be possible. 